I'm uh, Richard Dalton. I'm a senior manager of user experience design at Vanguard, a large financial services company based out in Philadelphia. Um, I'm talking today about how we can use quantitative measures to judge whether or not our user experiences are good or bad. Um, so much of what we do focuses around qualitative measures or usability testing today, and I'm not suggesting that quantitative techniques are a replacement for that, but they go hand in hand. Um, many times people will say, well, this page gets 10,000 hits, um, but what does that really mean? Is that good or bad? Right? If that's a, a help page, maybe that's not such a good thing. If 100,000 people were looking for that page, um, but only 10,000 found it, maybe that's not good either. You know, did those 10,000 users go away satisfied when they saw that page? Did it do anything for the business's bottom line? How can we frame um, the data that we can gather on web experiences to, to put it into a meaningful context so that we can understand whether or not we're succeeding or failing. So, so we are very, uh, internally at Vanguard, we're very uh, collaborative. We try and bring uh, business partners into the process as early as possible so that they can buy into the, the measures and metrics. In fact, I talk a little bit about that, some of the cultural challenges to introducing some of these techniques towards the end of the presentation. Um, we, we basically have a technique which we use to frame up very, in a very collaborative fashion with the business and with design, with technology, what are the objectives of the page. Um, uh, these techniques also work in non-web environments, so I hesitate to say page because that only is, is a web-specific term, but it, you know, most of the stuff we're doing is, is focused around the web, so you know, we, we try and help the business uh, understand what the objectives of the page are from both a user-driven and a business-driven perspective. Then we prioritize those uh, metrics uh, or those tasks, if you like, and then we define measures and metrics for each task because the interesting thing is that about a page on the web is very few pages on the web are trying to do one single thing. Right? Even Google's search page, the home page, isn't just trying to get you to search. There are other links on there. Right? It may be trying to do 10 different things. And it may be doing well at some of them, but poorly at others. So you need to understand everything the page is trying to do, define metrics for all of those things so that you can gauge which ones you're doing well at and which ones you're not. Well, you can, uh, you can use some of the quantitative uh, techniques uh, mainly to, um, you can, there's really two different types of quantitative measures, if you like. There are uh, what, what I call enduring measures, which are measures that you could put on something like a dashboard or a scorecard, which you can define and then um, they persist on an ongoing basis and you can continue to measure them month after month after month, which you probably wouldn't do through qualitative techniques. And then there are temporary measures like A-B testing or multivariate testing, where you're taking a specific idea and you're getting some data to see whether or not you can, you know, getting some data to inform a design decision. Qualitative techniques tend to be a point in time, right? You, you, you do a survey and then you don't do it again. You do a usability test and you don't do it again. You can do surveys on an ongoing basis and use those results, but generally qualitative techniques tend to be, you know, I want some data to make a decision or to help me make a decision. Um, quantitative can go on beyond that. Um, a lot of what quantitative can do is small tweaks. You can understand small things. You can tweak things and A-B test things and, and improve specific ideas. Um, actually, the, the interesting kind of twist of that question is what can qualitative do that quantitative cannot? Because that's actually a lot more, right? So there's, there are things that aren't easily tested when it comes to quantitative measures, and which is why these, these techniques go hand in hand. Quantitative measures are very awkward to try and test things like the aesthetics of your experience or how well you're uh, supporting your brand in your experience. Things that, that, that are about um, opinion um, uh, or understanding are much more difficult to, to test. Things that are around behavior of clients are very easy to test, but the, the, the more subjective side of things is where the qualitative techniques trump the quantitative. My, my primary advice um, would be to actually start small. Um, these types of uh, techniques that you can use and the, and the data that you get back are quite addictive in my experience. Once you start with something small and you see the value in what you can do with the data and how you can use it, um, it, it becomes something that you want to do more of and that your organization uh, starts to get more, uh, uh, the internal demand for it starts to become greater in your organization. So my, my, uh, my guidance, my biggest thing would be to uh, use some of the techniques that I'll be talking about in the presentation um, and, and start small. Pick a single page 
uh, define some of your objectives for that page, pick some measurements, and go and measure that data. Um, and then try and use that data to help you make better informed decisions going forward, and that will, will snowball within your organization.